Welcome back everybody, 47 Driver here again. I'm gonna do a quick down and dirty basic navigation video for the DCS CH47 Fox. Um, well, first of all, I wanna thank all of you guys who have subscribed. Uh, I think, pretty sure I hit a thousand in like uh, 48 hours or something, which is pretty awesome. Um, I didn't expect that at all, so very cool. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, the views have been been awesome, and I appreciate all your your kind words and everything in the comments. Uh, it's been really cool, and it's been, uh, as I've said, motivational, and uh, makes me want to keep making these things. So um, let's get right into it. So uh, I'm on the APU on APU uh, generator power. You can do this obviously on on full power uh, main power as well, uh, but I didn't want all the noise in the background uh, for this video because it's going to be mostly in the CDU and on the MFD. So. Uh, the MFDs are going to default to the index page one of two. Um, go to the flight plan page right here, and uh, we're going to try and add some uh, some points in here. So uh, lat long is the only thing we can use right now. MGRS is not implemented yet, which is fine. Um, I don't personally use lat long uh, very often in the real helicopter, so I might say some things wrong and formatting might be weird for me because I'm just not used to it but the basic uh, principles are the same so I'm gonna go to the F10 map and I'm gonna find a point somewhere let's say down here uh, I'm gonna use the fancy new alt left click feature that DCS implemented that's gonna bring up my coordinates box it's gonna be off screen for you guys because I'm uh, reformatting my uh, my recording resolution here so it uh, doesn't look stretched and crazy like I've said in the other videos here. So I got my point, and there's two ways I can enter uh, lat long into the CDU. Uh, the first one is going to be just very simple four digit northing and four digit easting. So I'm gonna do that one first. So I'm gonna north, and I'm gonna round up the uh, the minutes um, section, depending, or round it up or down, depending on what it says. So north three, two degrees, and in this case, it's gonna be 19 minutes. And then I'm gonna go right to Eastings, or the Easting, and I'm gonna do the same there, 6-2, and this one will be 1-2. Uh, now where I drop this, uh, I'm gonna drop it uh, into the flight plan page using the left line select keys on the CDU, and it's going to go above whichever left line select key I put it on. So uh, in this case, it's gonna be my first point in my flight plan, so to get it uh, into the flight plan in this case, I need to drop it um, right here next to uh, where it says end. Uh, and that's gonna bring it up to the top of my flight plan above end. So there we go, we got our first uh, ACP in our flight plan. All right, so let's do another one. And I'll show you the other way that you can uh, format the lat long so click a random point got my coordinates box again and this time when you look at your coordinates box uh, that pops up you're going to reference the lat long decimal minutes uh, and I wish I could drag this box around but I can't uh, so I could show you but um, and what that's going to look like is you start with your north three two two zero right so I've got four digits decimal five six eight and I'm copying the exact formatting that's on the coordinates box the only thing that's going to change uh, in regards to formatting is the easting it's going to start with the zero and there's other uh, another uh, there's a couple other aircraft in the in the sim that do that as well I think the f-18 does so I'm going to hit uh, e for easting start with a zero uh, which is not going to be displayed in the coordinates box so don't forget that zero uh, zero six two one eight so that's five decimals or sorry five numbers prior to the decimal for the easting hit decimal and then six six eight now I want this to be my next flight plan point after this one so I'm going to drop that here once again uh, at end and it will put it below this one if I wanted to make this uh, have this point come in the flight plan before this one I need to drop it next to this one and it always goes above uh, what you've dropped it next to so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I want this to be the next one after this so I'm gonna hit end again and it's gonna become the next point all right so I'm gonna do one more in the flight plan 
We're gonna go quick, find another random point. Let's click on map somewhere. I'm gonna use that same formatting. So lat long decimal minutes, three two two three decimal seven one zero east zero six two one eight decimal eight five four. And that'll be my last flight plan point. Cool, so now we have a basic flight plan and we want to display that on our MFD. So let me reset my head position here. And you can see on the MFDs, I think it's gonna to default to this screen, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, but I've got my ICAS up and my default outboard setting with my uh, VSD and my HSD. So I want my HSD on my inboard. So I hit HSD here, it's gonna to default to uh, centered with no nothing going on. Uh, so go next to where it says HSD on the bottom and uh, let me give you a better head position here um, and hit this button and it'll give you your moving map display. Uh, I like to fly decentered on my inboard MFD so I'm going to hit center right there it's going to decenter my MFD. Now I can hit overlay you've got two overlay pages Overlay 1 is going to uh, give you all these options here. So hit flight plan. You can see I've got my, uh, because I'm decentered, let me recenter it, sorry. Um, it's kind of, they're, they're kind of far away here, so uh, you see my flight plan points up there. Um, you can also hit nav symbology. That'll display like airports, nav aids, and stuff like that. And then I like to use the range ranks, which is, uh, these are going to be in uh, nautical miles distance away from the helicopter so I can tell that my uh, final ACP there is about seven and a half miles away from my current position. CDI doesn't function yet but it is kind of modeled you can see on my outboard MFD uh, there is a bit of a CDI there. Um, yeah and you can do the same thing on your outboard MFD. So I want to have this uh, full compass rose HSD HSI display here um, so I have full situational awareness of uh, uh, headings I can hit overlay on this one, go to flight plan, and then nav symbology. Range rings do not work uh, in half display, which is what this, this is it right now. So you can select them, but it won't do anything. Um, and you'll notice from my present position to my first ACP, there's like, there's nothing going on here. There's no uh, kind of course to get me to that point. So I, th I think that's kind of a, uh, a bug right now. Uh, it should wherever you make your first um, ACP in the flight plan page on the CDU it should automatically generate uh, kind of a direct to that uh, first ACP for you um, so what we can do is either uh, use the mark point function on the CDU uh, or on the thrust uh, so there's a mark point button here at the bottom left of the CDU and there's also the mark button on the thrust lever which I don't know is modeled yet um, but you can hit mark and that'll drop a mark point at your present position. I'll give you some data for it um, and you can drop that in your flight plan at the very beginning which is done by once again left line selecting the very top uh, ACP um, or and I'm not sure if this is going to work properly but you can use direct to. So there's a direct to uh, function on the CDU at the very top next to index. You hit direct to. It's going to bring up the direct to page and you can left line select your first ACP. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. So it seems that uh, this uh, simulation wants a starting point based on where your aircraft currently is. So in that case, we're going to use the mark point function, hit mark, go back to flight plan, and we're going to drop that right at the beginning of our flight plan. Um, and that should, let me see, there we go. So now what I just did is uh, I dropped that initial flight plan point, which is where we currently are. Uh, it didn't seem to want to sequence properly. So I hit direct to and went direct to my first ACP on the route. Uh, so the one after my initial point and it gave me a direct to line right there on the MFD. So now I've got uh, immediately I have a course to follow and my active leg is going to be uh, white and my subsequent legs uh, are going to be magenta. Uh, and you can see on the outboard MFD here I do have a, a CDI with an arrow. Uh, to follow a pointer to follow so that's pretty that's that's pretty much it for uh, working flight plan stuff it's very straightforward um, just like it is in the real aircraft 
Hopefully that helps you guys out. I want to touch on a couple more things now uh, that are a little bit beyond the basics. Uh, but now you guys at least have the basics uh, for getting some flight plan uh, points slash ACPs going. Uh, you can see on my MFD here, it's got um, distance to my next ACP at the top left, uh, 3.5 nautical miles in this case. That is also reflected on the range rings here. It's, it's out past the 2.5, but before the 5.0. Um, some more features. So the default page that this inboard MFD is going to uh, be on when you power on the aircraft is the flight plan summary page, and that looks like this. Uh, so this gives you a little bit of data, gives you the lat long of your ACP. Hopefully that'll change to MGRS when we have that feature. Uh, ACP number, type of leg, uh, or sorry, type of ACP. Uh, in this case, they're all going to be cruise points, uh, but later on we'll have things such as hover and land uh, ACPs. Um, speed that you've programmed that you're going to cross that ACP at, which is going to correlate with your timing, estimated time of arrival and estimated time of uh, slash estimated time of departure depending on what you're looking at your current course and distance to the ACP and then the course and distance to the next ACP from this ACP uh, so that's pretty nice you can sequence through these with the flight plan and you can also give yourself a direct to from this screen instead of using the CDU as well um, so I could select uh, this ACP if I wanted to go direct to that and hit direct to and it will take me direct to uh, I can s click on uh, data. It gives me a little bit more information. The only thing that's really applicable here is the uh, uh, terrain elevation MSL of where you dropped that ACP. Um, so that's pretty pretty good for route planning purposes. Uh, you can tell as I'm going along my route of flight, the terrain seems to be kind of coming up. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Back to the summary page. That's pretty much it for that. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about uh, is we'll talk first on um, deleting ACPs. Uh, let me fix my head position here so it's not cockeyed looking at this thing. Stand by. All right, hopefully that's a little easier to see. Uh, so removing an ACP, let's say um, I like the route overall, but there's one ACP that kind of takes me out of, out of the way and I don't really want to go there anymore. All I have to do is hit the minus or dash button on the CDU and select uh, directly uh, line select the ACP uh, specifically that I want to delete so let's say I want to get rid of ACP 2 I hit minus so it's in the scratch pad right there and I can uh, left line select that right there um, last thing I want to touch on uh, once again a bit more advanced so beyond the basics uh, of just getting you up and going but I figured I'd talk about it while we're here is your alternate flight plan um, so the alternate page go back to index is right here you can see it's just like the flight plan page it's got nothing in it right now uh, but it says alternate up here so I'm gonna pause the video I'm gonna throw a couple uh, flight plan points ACPs in the alternate just like I did with the regular flight plan and kind of show you some of the features of the alternate page. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Um, got a couple ACPs in the alternate flight plan now. And what you can do with this is uh, this can be uh, some sort of alternate routing, a, a different uh, ingress or egress route to your LZ uh, or from your LZ. Um, and you can have this available to you um, and it won't mess with your active flight plan. Uh, so you can see my active flight plan, different coordinates and, uh, and all that than the alternate. So what I can do with this um, is I can go to the alternate management page um, and you got some alternates in here. So you can reverse your flight plan right there and that'll flip your points around. So let's say you wanted to, uh, you're flying to an LZ and you got your primary flight plan right here and you wanted to, uh, go reverse route back home uh, using the same route without having to type in any new points so easy way to do that is go to index alternate alternate management and these functions right here um, the, the three add flight plan replace flight plan replace alternate uh, the way I like to remember these is you have add flight plan to alternate uh, so it's going to drop your flight plan in your alternate flight plan somewhere but not erase anything you have replace flight plan with alternate. So if I wanted to add this route that I have in the alternate page 
to my flight plan uh, somewhere, I can, uh, or sorry, if I wanted to replace my active flight plan uh, with this current alternate flight plan, I would hit this button. And then I can do the same for the alternate with my active flight plan. So if I want to reverse my active flight plan's route, what I'll do is replace alternate with flight plan. So now my flight plan and my alternate are both the same. So I hit flight plan, same exact coordinates. I go to alternate, same exact coordinates. So now I can go back to alternate management and hit reverse alternate. And now my alternate flight plan mirrors my active flight plan, but backwards in reverse. And so now let's say I got to my LZ and I want to use this to get back uh, to where I came from. I can go alternate management and I can either add, uh, sorry, I, I think the add alternate to flight plan uh, option is in the flight plan management. So I went back to flight plan, flight plan management, yeah. So I can either add my alternate uh, into my active flight plan somewhere, or I can replace my flight plan with that alternate route in general. So in this case, uh, nothing wrong with this, just adding it. So I'm gonna add alternate to flight plan and insert alternate before like I said, it follows the same procedure. It's gonna go above wherever you select. So insert before end in this case. So now I've got a route to my LZ. Let's say ACP3 is my LZ. And then a route using the same routing back to where I came from. So pretty simple um, and pretty cool feature that uh, gives you a little bit more functionality of uh, flight plan management in the Chinook. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope this helped you guys. Um, once again, I really appreciate all the subscribers, the comments, the likes, um, the views, everything's been been way, way more than I ever expected. Uh, so truly, thank you all. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoy this. I'm glad I can share it with you. Uh, and I uh, hope this helps you guys get out and build some flight plans on those multiplayer servers so you're not having to Look at the F10 map every five seconds and uh, try, try not to crash into the ground. So, uh, pretty straightforward. If you guys have any questions, drop them below, and uh, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks again.